start with the render setup. Go to the render setup by hitting F10 or rendering in the toolbar and selecting render setup. Then comment. In the output size, we'll select HDTV 1920 by 1080 or custom and using any other aspect ratio that we want. In the scene tab, change noise level limit to 5 and denoising to corona high quality. We'll make some adjustment in the scene environment and override when we do the lighting. In the camera tab, tone mapping, let's change highlight compress to 5. Filmic Highlights to 0.5, Filmic Shadow to 1, Contrast to 4, and Basic Photographic Setting has to be checked. We can make this adjustment in the Virtual Frame Buffer as well. For the Bloom and Glare, check Enable and change Glare Intensity to 3. Next is the Performance tab, and the only thing that will change is Precision. Change it to 0.25. Last one is Render Element. We'll use this element later for the post-production. The items that we are going to add are C Essential Reflect and Refract to have access to the reflection and refraction. C Masking Wire Color to have access to the object when we want to select them in the post-production. C Text Map to add more shadow on the corners. And we have to add AO Map in the Material tab. Let's select Corona AO here and drag and drop it to the Material Editor. Double click on that and change max distance to 10 cm, which means 10 cm shadow for the corners. Last one is C shading bloom glare, which will be used for rays of the light. To save this preset, go to the preset on the top and save preset with the name and hit save. It will save time for the next time for future uses and will only need to load it next time. Now it's time to add our path lights to the scene based on RCP. Go to the layer manager and turn on RCP. Isolate the ceiling, RCP and path lights. Then select ceiling, right click and uncheck back face call, displace as a box and start adding path lights. We'll then change the ceiling to the back face call again. Now we may want to start lighting. The first thing we'll tackle is environment lighting and for this suite we'll want to do dust lighting to catch more interior lights so we will do HDRI lighting. Begin by opening the material editor and drag and drop Corona Pip map for the map we choose HDRI from folder. Then open render setup in the scene tab scene environment and select single map. Drag and drop this texture to the map for that. Now it's time to start doing test renders by starting up interactive. The good thing about that is when we move to the scene, we have real-time rendering. As you can see, it's dark, but it doesn't look like dusk. We want to have a little bit of a dark blue tone in the scene. To do that, open Material Editor and select Corona Color Correction and assign this bitmap to that. In the Corona Color Correction, We'll change the color of the tint to something like a dark blue color and assign this color correction to the single map. Let's do another interactive rendering. As you can see, the color changed to the blue and it's dark now. Another adjustment that we may want to make is changing the saturation to negative 0.1. For now, we haven't set up the camera and we are in perspective mode. But in the camera setup, we can make some adjustment that give us the same adjustment for the camera. In the render setup, camera tab, basic photographic setting, we can change these items. We have a shutter speed that indicates how long light is permitted to hit your camera sensor. So the lower the number, the less the scene is bright. F-stop controls the amount of light that goes into the lens and lower the number for that makes the scene brighter. ISO is how sensitive your camera sensor is to light. Now we can start to work with these numbers. Let's change the f-stop to 8 or 6. The outside is still bright and doesn't look like dust light. So we need to change the outside to a darker blue. To do that, open Material Editor and change the exposure to negative 2 to make it darker. Now we have environment lighting and we will tweak it after we set up the camera. To do that, 
First open the layer manager and create a new layer for cameras. Then go to the top view and select chrono camera and drag and drop to the scene. In the modifier panel, uncheck targeted since we want to have a free camera. In photographic parameters, use photographic ISO and for the focal length, we'll use 20 to have a wider camera, film width 36. We'll make other adjustments for sensor, lens and shutter speed in the interactive rendering. Go to the camera view and move the camera up to a height of almost 120 cm. Now we'll go to the camera view and with dolly camera or pan, we'll move it to catch the best view. In this view, you want to first hide the armchair, so right click on that and hide selection. Then you want to move back and we need clipping to remove the window and wall from the camera view. To do that, go to the camera modifier, environment and clipping, enable camera clipping. Change the number amount to enter to the scene again. We also have to set up the aspect ratio and save frame. First open render setup. In the comment tab, the output size shows the aspect ratio and size of the render. If we click shift plus V on the scene, we can see the size of the render with the aspect ratio of 1.33 in the output size. For now, let's change it to 1.7 and lock it. Then change the width to 2500 and height will be set up automatically according to the aspect ratio. The yellow line around the render shows the safe frame or area that we'll see in the render. If we press plus sign on the left side of the window, configure viewport safe frame, we can make some more adjustments like action safe, title safe, and user safe. Field grid is helpful because it gives us a 4x3 grid and with these lines we can make sure that important visuals essentials to the final renders are contained. Now we'll do a test render. Hit start interactive. As you can see the render is pretty dark so we need to go to the camera modifier and make some adjustment. Change the f stop to 5 or 4 and shutter speed to 40. The scene has started to lighten up, so let's change shutter speed to 20 and if it's up to 5 again. So that looks pretty good since it's not supposed to brighten up all the area as we have interior lights. It works as an environment light. Next is the dining area. We'll copy the same camera and change the name of the camera to dining area and then select the camera and rotate it. With Dolly, move back and start interactive rendering here. These starlights that we have on the dining table are coming from Bloom and Glare. Check the virtual frame buffer window and set glare intensity to 3. Let's continue to add some cameras. We may want to set up cameras in all areas and test the environment's lighting. After doing that, we'll start adding interior lights. Go to the create panel, light and select Chrono Light. Drag and drop a light into the scene in the top view and go to the modifier panel. Check targeted as we want to have IES light and set intensity to 60 for now. Temperature to 4500, shape disk, radius 3 and uncheck all the visibility items as we don't want to see the shape of the light in the scene or the reflection or refraction. In the IES map, go to the folder that we have Corona IES map and select Intermediate Bright. Then in the top and front view, set it for one of the path light objects. Also move it to a separate layer in the layer manager. Instance it for all the path lights in the living area since we want to set up different intensity and temperature for each area separately. Now we'll start test rendering. As you can see, we need to brighten up the space by changing the intensity. Change it to 100, 200, and 300. Or another way is to change the radius of lighting and make it bigger, while keeping the intensity to the true number for the intensity like 60 watt, for example. Let's change the radius to 5. It looks pretty good. 
Let's move on to the dining area and copy paste the IES light in the top view to the first spotlight there and instance the other ones. Now we'll do a test render with the dining area camera. The intensity of lights looks good for now and we'll need to add the chandelier on top of the dining table and pendant on top of the island. Let's go to the file, import, merge and find the chandelier file and merge it. Now it's time to add lights for that. We'll start with the dining chandelier. Go to the top view, then light, select chrono light, drag and drop for the first light and the chandelier. Change it to the sphere and leave the intensity to 60 for now and temperature to 4500. Change the radius to 2.8 and instance it for the other lights and do a test render. The intensity is pretty low, so we'll change it to 200. It's starting to brighten up. Let's change the pot light temperature to 5500 to have a combination of warm and cool light. Then change the color temperature to 4000. It looks better now. So we'll add more contrast by changing the temperature of chandelier light to 4000 and IES to 6000. Looking good for now. We may change it after doing the kitchen lighting. For the pendant, let's add this lighting. Go to the top view and drag and drop a disk light with a color temperature of 4500. An instance to create the other ones. We need lights under the cabinet. So let's add a rectangle light with a temperature of 4500 for all of them and make them visible directly. Go to the dining area camera and do a test render again. The intensity for the lights under the cabinet is pretty high, so we'll change it to half the amount. For now it looks pretty good. The next area we will do is the corridor lighting. We'll start by copy pasting the same IES for the first one and instance for the others. Do a test render. Looking good. Now we may want to go to the foyer camera and do a test render to make sure lighting for corridor works properly. We need to change the intensity to a, a higher amount like 300 and temperature to 5500. Go to the camera and change the f-stop to 5.5. Basically, it's all about playing around with the intensity and temperature of the lights and f-stop and shutter speed of the camera to get a good result. Okay, we are done for this session. In the next one, we're gonna continue to do lighting for the other areas. See you next time.